A warm greetings for the day. This is Chetan Kumar from Workday and I welcome all of you to this video on data sufficiency. I have been publishing a number of videos on various aptitude concepts and if you have not watched them yet, I will give you the links of all those videos in the description. You can watch them once you finish watching this and you can also check them in the playlist section of this channel. As I mentioned earlier, today's video will be on the concept of data sufficiency and we will be covering 5 problems on the same that you are most likely to get in the upcoming exams. Without wasting much time, we will quickly get into the concept of data sufficiency. So let me tell you two important things about data sufficiency problems. Always data sufficiency problems will be in this format. There will be question in the beginning followed by two statements, statement number one and statement number two. Depending upon the data available in statement number one and two, you need to decide is it possible to find out the answer to the question. How you can answer a data sufficiency question? You can pick your answers out of these five. Your answer can be A or B or C, D or E. And let me tell you when to pick A as the answer. If you feel that data present in statement 1 alone are sufficient to answer the question, while the data in statement 2 alone are not sufficient to answer, in that case, your answer has to be A. And you have to pick answer as B if data present in statement 2 alone are sufficient, whereas data present in statement 1 alone are not sufficient to answer the question. You have to pick C as the answer if you feel the data either in statement 1 alone or in statement 2 alone are sufficient to answer the question independently. See that is the difference independently. That means if you take statement 1 alone, you will get the answer or you will get the answer even if you take statement 2 separately. Your answer has to be D if the data given in both statement 1 and statement 2 together are not sufficient to answer the question and you have to pick your answer as E if data present in both statement 1 and 2 together are necessary to answer the question. See these directions are exclusively for the problems that I have taken in this video and different aptitude examinations may have different answer choices depending upon their statement structure and you will have to read them carefully before you attempt any data sufficiency problem. Without wasting much time we will quickly get into problem number one and the question and answer choices are all available here. Your answer has to be A or B or C or D or E and that is the reason I want all of you to take a screenshot and keep this particular information ready side by side so you will find it easy to pick the right answer. Take the screenshot of this particular slide and keep it ready and then answer this question. Now data present in which of the statements sufficient to answer this question. Alright, we will move on to the explanation part of this particular problem. First thing you need to do is reading the question completely. I will read it for you. There are four different birds in a jungle, parrot, sparrow, pigeon and crow. They sit on different trees, namely neem, mango, palm and banyan, but not necessarily in the same order. Parrot sits on the neem tree. So it is already given that the bird parrot sits on neem tree. Now this is fixed. Crow sits neither on banyan tree nor on mango tree. So I'll write banyan here and I'll write mango here. Now crow cannot sit on these two tree. I will eliminate those crow position here. Which bird is sitting on the banyan tree? Now they are asking you which bird is sitting on the banyan tree. Now crow cannot sit. You got to know that. But 
there are two more birds right one is sparrow and a pigeon uh, will you be able to answer this question just by reading the question part alone absolutely not and that is the reason you have to take the assistance of these two statements and which of the statements are sufficient to answer the question before i move on i will write one more tree as well and that tree is palm tree and two more birds are there pigeon as well as sparrow now i will use the information available in the question and i will use statement 1 alone and i will check whether it is possible to get the answer just by reading the statement 1 alone they said sparrow does not sit on banyan tree then i got to know that crow cannot sit on the banyan tree that is from the question and after reading the statement 1 i got to know that sparrow does not sit on banyan tree now which bird should sit on the banyan tree then definitely only one option is remaining and that is pigeon right i will write pigeon over here and then crow cannot sit on the mango tree as well right crow will be sitting on palm tree and then only one option is remaining that is sparrow and this brings me to the conclusion that statement 1 alone can give me the answer so many of the people end up ticking option a as the right answer thinking that statement 1 alone is sufficient to provide the answer where statement 2 alone is not sufficient to provide the answer how did you come to the conclusion without even checking statement number 2 don't come to that conclusion directly without checking statement number 2 you will have to check statement number 2 as well for that i will write the same information one more time name banyan mango and palm and you know that parrot sits on the neem tree crow cannot sit on the banyan tree and then that's all this is what is the observation from the question alone now don't combine the data present in statement 1 because it is gone you have to only take the information available in statement 2 pigeon neither sits on palm nor on mango that means pigeon cannot sit over here this is not for pigeon and pigeon cannot sit on the mango tree as well then where should pigeon sit definitely pigeon has to sit on the banyan tree and then you already know that crow cannot sit on the mango tree so then crow has to be on the palm tree then comes the sparrow that means i will be able to find out the answer to this question using the statement 2 alone as well so statement 1 also gives me the answer statement 2 also gives me the answer in that case if both statement 1 and statement 2 individually can give me the answer your answer has to be option c i hope that you have understood how to solve this problem we will move on to question number 2 Question number 2 is available to all of you over here read the question and then tell me the answer cool we'll go with the solution part right now and i would like to take the solution in terms of a graph now i will write like this and then i'll read the statement 1 alone s is shorter than q so if this is s definitely the person is shorter than q next part is p is shorter than only t p is shorter than only t means p is taller than rest of the people that tells me that t is the tallest and second tallest is p even if you did not understand earlier you can see that now p is shorter than only t but he is taller than rest of the people even if r is remaining i can definitely say who is the tallest among all which is t so you can answer this question using the statement 1 alone but don't come to the conclusion you never know whether you are able to find out the answer using the statement 2 alone or not unless you check them so now i'll go with the statement number 2 and i'll check whether it is possible to answer the question using only statement 
They said Q is taller than only yes. That means yes is here and Q is taller than only yes. Meaning of this sentence is Q is shorter than the remaining people. He is taller than only yes. Then T is taller than P and R. There is a guy called T and he is taller than P and R and that brings us to the conclusion that T is the tallest in this case also. I can find out the answer to this question using the statement 1 alone. I can also find out the answer to this question using statement 2 alone. And either of the statement gives me the answer independently then my answer has to be C just like the previous problem. So answer to this question is C. Great. We will move on to the next problem that is question number 3 and read the question carefully and then tell me the answer. Cool. I will take only statement number 1 right now in a 6 storied building right. Now to avoid confusion I will eliminate the ground floor. I will take only 6 floors now. One. 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6, right? See here, this is the first one, second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth. Done. Rekha is on the fourth floor. It is already given that Rekha is over here. And Shikha likes to reside only on even numbered floors. That means Shikha can be here or Shikha can be here as well. Rima is not on the topmost floor. So that means Rima cannot come here. Of course, uh, if Shikha is there, Rima cannot come, right? Or if Shikha is not there, in that case also Rima cannot come here. Now, can you tell me which floor Shikha is residing now? No, there are two options possible. One is the sixth floor and one more is the second floor. If the question was something like Rima resides on the sixth floor, then you could have directly said Shikha resides on second floor but now you cannot tell the answer using the statement one alone so option a is gone now check is it possible to answer this question using the statement two alone again i'm telling you using the statement two alone i will erase this portion for time being and then i'll check is it possible how will i do that if you read rima is two floors below peter who is three floors above Shikha. Now you don't know where exactly this person is. Peter can be anywhere. Okay. He can be anywhere in this floor. So you cannot find out the answer. Multiple answers seem to be correct. And for example, if I can tell you, Rima is two floors below Peter, right? So definitely I, I'll take Peter here. And this is Rima. Now Peter has to be three floors above Shikha, right? This is absolutely not possible. Now the second possibility is Peter is in the fourth floor and Rima is in the second floor. And now if I consider Shikha here in the bottom, so Shikha will be here. Now in this case, Shikha is residing in which floor? First floor. And then what will you do if Peter is there in the fifth floor and Rima is in the third floor? In this case, Shikha's residence will be there in the second floor, right? So there are multiple answers could be to this particular problem if you go with statement 2 alone. Now many of you might be thinking that Shikha cannot be there in the odd numbered floor, right? Because she wishes to be residing only in the even numbered floors. See, you will get to know that only if you combine both 1 and 2. But right now I am checking only with statement 2. That is why it is not possible to answer this question. So option A is gone which tells me that statement 1 alone is sufficient. Option B is also gone which tells me statement 2 alone is sufficient. And then I will go for option C which is also gone because either of the statement independently will not give me the answer. Now my answer has to be either D or E. D means Statement number 1 and 2 together are not sufficient to give the answer and E is together they will be able to give the answer. Now we'll check whether they are able to give the answer together. I will erase all of this and then I'll write like this. 
Shikha is willing to reside only on the even numbered floors so Shikha can be in the second floor fourth floor or sixth floor and it is already given that Rekha is on the fourth floor so Shikha cannot be here Shikha can be there in the sixth floor or Shikha can be in the second floor also if you say that Shikha is residing in the sixth floor then you have violated the problem statement because it is given Peter is three floors above Shikha right and if Shikha is the resident of the top floor where will you keep Peter is he floating in the air <laughs> actually that's not possible and that's why Shikha cannot be there in the last place Shikha has to be here and if Shikha is here Peter has to be three floors above right Peter will be in the fifth floor and then uh, the person who is that Rima could be here in this case definitely this is possible see now I am not violating the problem statement Rima is two floors below Peter who is three floors above Shikha see that is how things are gonna work out so I hope that question is clear to you so using statement one and two together I will be able to answer this question option E is the right answer to this problem so we'll move on to question number four right now. Look at here. Data sufficiency is a problem where you will get the question from any chapter of aptitude, be it might be quantitative aptitude, verbal aptitude or reasoning aptitude as well. In this case, it is the problem from divisibility. What is the value of three digit number? The unit digit of which is three and it is divisible by 7. So you know that it's a 3 digit number and the unit digit has to be 3 at any cost and this number has to be divisible by 7. Now to answer this question you need to know the 3 digit number is divisible by 9. Okay, so that means number is already divisible by 7 and according to statement number one it is also divisible by nine so if any number is said to be divisible by both nine and seven then since these two are co-prime numbers that number will be divisible by 63 as well which is the product of these two numbers this is the rule in divisibility property the rule says that if two co-prime numbers are taken and if any number x is divisible by both of these co-prime numbers then this x is also divisible by product of those two and that's why this three digit number will be divisible by 63 also now the thing you need to understand is the lowest possible three digit number that ends with 3 and also divisible by 63 is 693 why is this case it is very simple if you say 63 into 1 in that case unit digit will be 3 but it is a two digit number and even if you continue this none of the cases you will get 3 in the units place except for 63 into 11 because in 3 stable 3 comes only when 3 is multiplied with 1 so 63 into 11 is the the lowest possible three digit number that is ending with 3 as well as divisible by 63 so the three digit number possible is 693 i will be able to answer this question using the statement one alone but don't come to the conclusion check with the second possibility also the second possibility says that that three digit number ending with three should be divisible by 21 also now your understanding is number has to be divisible by 7 number has to be divisible by 21 also and if number is divisible by 21 it will be definitely divisible by 7 also so you can take the possibilities like this what is 21 into 13 what is 21 into 13 you can do like this 21 into 10 is 210 21 into 3 is 63 you get 273 first possibility is 273 you get this answer right this is a three digit number divisible by 21 also and 7 also 
now there could be one more possibility which one is that 21 into 23 what is the answer to this question 23 into 20 will give me 460 and extra 23 is needed which is 483 see now again a three digit number ending with 3 this is divisible by both 21 and 7 see multiple answers are possible so you cannot find out that three digit number specifically so in order to answer this question statement 1 alone is sufficient but statement 2 alone is not sufficient that is the reason why option a could be the right answer option b is gone option c is gone and i don't need both the statements to come up with the answer so option e is also gone and option d says together are not sufficient but statement one alone is sufficient right that's why your answer has to be option a so i hope this problem is clear to all of you we'll move on to the next problem and this is the last problem of this video question number five for all of you is here and let me know the answer after five years what will be the sum of the ages of moni and sony you need to find out what is the sum of the ages of Moni as well as Sony. I will look at the statement one alone. They said five years before Moni was five years older than Sony. So five years ago means it will be M minus five and S minus five. And this difference was how much? Five years. Now using this, can I do anything? m minus 5 minus s plus 5 will be equal to 5 so then i get to know minus 5 and plus 5 is gone i got to know m minus s is equal to 5 so even now i don't know what is the answer this this we already knew this age difference is 5 means Moni was 5 years older than Sony means the age difference between them is 5, right? We already knew this and there is no much thing we can do about this. So using statement number 1, we cannot find out the answer because both of their ages are unknown. Now let me check, is it possible to answer this question using the statement 2 alone? At present, the ratio of their ages is 5 is to 6. Now simple thing is, Present age ratio is 5 is to 6. That means if Moni is 5, Sony is 6. And they are asking you, after 5 years, what will be the sum of the ages of both Moni and Sony? Using this alone, I will not be able to find out the answer. But if I combine the statement 1 and statement 2, it is possible to answer. How? See, statement number 1 says, Five years before, Moni was five years older than Sony. See, age difference will not be changing as the year progresses. I'm telling you this. Age difference will remain the constant no matter how many years you're going backward or forward. That will be the same. So, age difference between Moni and Sony is five years. And now, as per our ratio, this is one unit. Age difference is one unit. And now, if one unit is identical to 5 years, tell me, how much will be 5 units? It is 25 years. And how much will be this 6? That 6 will be 30 years. That gives me the conclusion that Moni is 25 years and Sony is 30 years of age. And the question is, after five years see this is present age right these are present ages respectively after five years Moni will become 30 and Sony will become 35 in that case what will be their sum their sum is 65 see how did I get the answer combining the data available in statement 1 and statement 2 so my answer is option E because I need data present in both statement 1 and 2 together to answer this question hence option e is the right answer i hope that you have understood question number five as well that brings us to the final part of this video thank you so much for watching this video and all the best for all your upcoming aptitude tests before you go out of this video 
don't forget to subscribe to this channel hit the bell icon and to post your queries inputs or suggestions in the comment with that said i will take your leave until i come up with a fresh new concept in the next video this is chetan kumar wishing you an amazing day ahead